Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel, my name is Anton and today we're gonna be covering another acronym, BFF, Best Friends Forever, Big F***ing Fiesta, you know that's what I say, another day, another acronym. But anyway, BFF, back and forth front end, I mention it here and there in my authentication videos, but I never really cover it. So this video is going to cover back and forth front end, specifically for the authentication scenario, which is when you obtain a token, when you want to make requests to that external API, you do it through your back end from your SPA application. The other scenario that is associated with BFF is if you have a SPA application that needs to call multiple internal services you just aggregate it under one backend which then proxies requests to the required services we're going to be taking a look at the first case not the second case and don't forget if you're enjoying the video leave a like and subscribe if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comment section don't forget to check out the description i have a c-sharp course that is out and with all of that out of the way let's get familiar with the two projects that we have over here the backend auth project is probably the scenario that most of you are going to be in because the way that Microsoft has auth set up, it is never used correctly. And I have a video on how to use auth correctly. If you want to familiarize with that first, go ahead and do that. A very good idea before watching this video is to be familiar with YARP, yet another reverse proxy. And I have a video on that out as well. Again, check out the description for both of those videos. So backend authentication, what is actually contained over here? A pretty empty project. The important thing here is that we have the reverse proxy registered. This is coming from the package YARP reverse proxy. We add our cookie authentication as the default authentication. We register it. And the way that we obtain this cookie is by signing in through YouTube. So when I have the login endpoint, what I'm really doing is I'm saying login through YouTube. That is going to take me through the external authentication flow give me back a cookie and inside of that cookie tokens are going to be stored. The configuration for all of that already exists and then we have this API YouTube endpoint which makes a call to the YouTube API. We are going to try to put this behind YARP. That is going to be the case in this project and then we're going to go over the second project which is the same but there is more going on here. The reason there is more going on here is because the authentication cookie that we're signing in is when we're logging in, this is actually the cookie that we're dealing out. And then when we want to take our YouTube account and connect it to our current authentication session, we have to override this method, mutate the authentication state. And then later on, if we sign in again, we need to again, bring in this additional claim, which represents whether we have connected YouTube or not. We also have a front end SPA application, which most of you will have. And finally, the important bit here is that we still have the same endpoint, which is going to be making calls to the YouTube API. So let's close the second project. Let's take a look at the first project. I'm going to go ahead and start that up. So dot watch. Here's the project. If I go ahead and log in, I'm going to get redirected to YouTube. And I'm going to go through the sign in flow. So authentication is complete. And now I'm going to go to API YouTube and I'm going to get information about my channel. This call is going through this endpoint over here. And now we want to move it behind YARP. So YARP is already installed. I'm going to go to the documentation just to grab the initial configuration. I'm going to go to the app settings over here, paste uh, the configuration, grab reverse proxy and just add it to the reverse proxy over here. So add or rather load from config. Builder, configuration, get section, and then reverse proxy. With that now installed, I've already shown how to do transformations on the route. And basically what we want to do is whenever we're hitting the slash API dash YouTube, we want to say that we want to match on this and then grab the rest. Then we're going to have transformations and I don't know the schema one to one. So I'm going to go to the transformation section over here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and find the two transformations over here because I know the first path pattern one is the one that I want. So let's go ahead, copy this, paste this over here. And this is one big thing about learning. If you just copy paste stuff, you don't remember it. You just remember where you copy pasted it from. And that's pretty much the situation that I'm in here. So this is the path pattern that I want and the cluster one, the YouTube cluster. So let's call it YouTube. That is where I want my requests to go to. We'll say that this is a YouTube dash API route. We don't want to go to example.com. We want to go to Google APIs.com. Let's grab this place this over here instead of example.com. And then for the route prefix, we're going to grab slash YouTube V3. 
place this over here. And then for the rest, we're just going to pass that along. So now we're getting an, a lot more flexible option where we can make the requests from the front end and then hit any back end endpoint as well. One thing that you hopefully see that is missing from here is the authentication token, which we're going to be attaching here. The way that you actually get the authentication token is you have to add your own transformation. So for the transformation context, on the transformation context, we want to add request transform. So request transformation context. Here we will have things like the HTTP context, and this is going to happen on every request. So we want to check that the destination prefix, if where we're going is going to be this Google's API thing, we can whack the URL here. From the HTTP context, we can then get the token. And after we get the access token, so RC HTTP context, we can make this asynchronous. We then grab the authorization header and we attach it to the RC proxy request headers authorization. And that is all the transformation that we need. Semicolon on here. And there it is. With this now present here, let's take this endpoint that we had previously and comment it out. One thing that you can hopefully see on here is that it has a requires authorization flag. We can check this on here if RC HTTP context user identity authenticated and the destination is this. Make sure that we handle the null over here. Let's place this here. And if this is null return false, and we get a simple transformation like this and make sure that this is commented out. And that's pretty much it. So the application should restart. With that now restarted, let's come back over here. And I'm going to still make the same call, although now I'm getting a 404. This endpoint is not found and that's not actually what I expected to get. But that is because I haven't actually mapped the reverse proxy. So we're not handling these incoming requests. So with that, let's go ahead and wait for the restart. Again, let's refresh. And this time the response is coming from Google that we don't actually know what this route is. And that is because I'm not actually specifying the resource. So now if I take this end bit where I say I want to go into the channels and I want to get this information. If I place this in the URL, one too many forward slashes, and now I get the exact same data. From app settings over here, this bit that I'm attaching to the request right here is being captured and just proxied along to the YouTube backend. Hopefully simple enough. Again, the big crutch with this approach is that the access token that you're getting over here and with this authentication method is that you are only able to store one access token per one authentication method. If you're building an application where you have users that can connect their Discord account, can connect their Twitch account, can connect their Patreon, they have all of these ways, all of these accounts that can come together, you will need some kind of other strategy for storing all of these tokens and resolving all of these tokens. So this is where backend for frontend is going to act as the holder of all of those tokens and proxying requests to all the relevant backends and then attaching all the relevant tokens to all those relevant backends. Now, all that we've learned over here, let's go ahead and keep these two files open. We're going to go over to program CS over here and we're going to observe the setup a little bit closer. We have this additional token database that we're registering over here and it's really just a dictionary with a data protection provider. So for people that are looking at this, yes, I receive a token. I want to store it in the database. Just put a data protection around it and encrypt it. So the token is stored securely. One thing that you're going to need to handle is if your application restarts and you're not persisting your keys somewhere, you are going to lose that encrypted data. Again, we're registering the reverse proxy. We have the same authentication method. One thing that is different here is that we're not saving tokens in the cookie. The way that we're saving tokens is after we have completed our journey through authentication, we get our token database, whatever result we have on the context for when we get the access token, we store that in the token database against the user. One parameter that is missing over here is what type of token it is, right? You can supply it with the user ID. You can say, is it a YouTube token? Is it a Facebook token, etc. 
We then have an authorization policy that basically checks if the YouTube token is enabled, we just have a yes or a non-existent claim. We reload that claim when we re-log in into the claims principle over here. Again, I don't have a login screen so we can actually understand what the heck is going on. We are then loading the user and this is going to be relevant for the Vue.js application that I have over here. We then want to connect with YouTube and this is what's going to trigger the authentication over here, okay? After that, we have the same API call and I already use the reverse proxy over here to proxy all of the requests to my spa. And that's pretty much it for the setup. So let's go ahead and close all of the applications here. We're gonna take the backend. I'm gonna say dot watch. That started with a big exception because front end is not running. So let's open that up and say npm run dev. If we come back over here, we have a UI that looks something like this. So first we see a login button. If we open up the SRC, we're gonna have main.js, which just loads the application. And then app.view is pretty small. You can pause and read the screen here, but the main juice is user.js. We have the user state. We try to load the user information. First thing when this application loads, and if you specify this header, this is gonna prevent the redirect and just accept the 401 status. So you're not gonna get redirected to the login page. We then set the user state. We also have methods for logging in, for connecting with YouTube. It looks a little bit different. We're not fetching, we're just redirecting the browser over there. And then we try to load that YouTube data. Back in app.view, we have a step-by-step -step process where we're not authenticated, we wanna log in. We're then authenticated, we can see the user and if YouTube is enabled, it's not gonna be enabled from the beginning. And the token database is in memory. So if the application restarts, we're gonna lose the tokens and we're gonna have to re-sign in or reconnect YouTube. Then finally, we'll have a button to connect to YouTube and then the second button, it should actually say fetch YouTube data. The fetch YouTube data is a little bit bare bones, same as in the previous example, we're gonna have to add a little bit more data that we're fetching here, but let's go through the motions and turn this to using the YARP reverse proxy. So the app settings that we had over here, let's go ahead, copy them. We're gonna go into app settings over here, paste them. The situation is exactly the same. Close all of the app settings on the back end off. We're gonna grab the way that we have been setting up our reverse proxy. We're gonna come back over here, go back to where we were registering the reverse proxy, set it up. I think this is gonna require an import. With that now done, we're gonna come back down here where we have API YouTube, things happened a little bit different. We didn't load the token from the user, we have loaded from the database. So what we actually want to do is resolve this service and load the token this way. Now that we're clear about that, let's comment this out. Let's go back to the transformation that we were performing over here. On the HTTP context, we wanna get the request services and get required service. This is going to grab the token database. So this is token DB. We're then gonna have the token DB over here. We will be able to find the user on the HTTP context. Find first claim. The claim I believe is just called ID. So when I am signing in, the claim is ID. Let's come back up. I don't need to await here. This will be user ID. I can fetch this before I fetch the token and I will actually need to grab the value here. So one thing is, if I'm not signed in, I'm not gonna have a user ID. So that is another way to check if I'm authenticated or not. You can also grab the authorization service from over here. So I, not authentication, authorization service. So let's say authorization service, AS. Uh, I'll just uh, call it as, why not authorize async? You can specify what user it is and what policy you want to authorize against, okay? So that is also available. With the token that we have over here, let's grab the access token, pass it along. And that should be pretty much it for the setup. I'm gonna remove the async call and say that I wanna return value task completed task. And that I believe should be it. The application should restart. Let's come back to the browser. Here we have the application. Let's open up uh, the DevTools. We're gonna refresh and just make sure that everything is happening correctly. So first of all, the 401 unauthenticated, that is expected because we're not authenticated. So if I go to the application and I log in, we're gonna see that we have some kind of consistent user identifier and that is just so 
when I'm signing in again and again after the application is restarted, it doesn't generate a random one for me because again, this is not persisted to disk. YouTube for me is not yet enabled. So when I press connect to YouTube, it is going to redirect me to sign in through YouTube. I am now connected with YouTube. If I try to fetch the data, I am going to get some kind of error potentially. No, everything has managed to respond correctly. And again, we just get a 200 with the Vite app or Vite app. And that is because I haven't actually mapped the reverse proxy over here. Same mistake. Let the application restart. So we're going to come back over here. If I refresh, YouTube is still enabled. However, remember that the actual token is flushed from the cache because the application has restarted. Let's refresh over here and I'm going to go through login again. With that now working, let's fetch uh, YouTube and now we're getting an error. If I go to the network, I will see that it's the same error that we're getting, but now we're getting it from Google. So all that's left for me to do is grab this route or end of the route that we had here, go to user.js slap it on over here. Hopefully the actual .NET application is not going to restart. And now if I fetch the data, uh, let me double check, uh, still uh, loaded from the wrong one. So I refresh, fetch again, and there we go. So this is now real data being fetched from the YouTube API. You don't need to create every single little endpoint. You don't need to create your own YouTube library. You just say, I want my front end to fetch this data from YouTube. And you're just specifying the route or using the YouTube API as if you're using it directly, but you're just using your own service and all of the requests get proxied. And this is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this video gives you a clearer idea for back and for front end. If you were ever obtaining tokens from YouTube or some kind of other API and you want to use it for your own front end and you kept the tokens on the front end and then you were trying to make a cross origin request that was not going to work you were gonna need a bff anyway a lot of the people were just trying to do external authentication and didn't actually need those calls to the external api and at that point you don't need a bff in a sense that you want to proxy the requests you just need a bff to store your tokens and that's the thing that i really explain in my how to do OAuth correctly and how you want to actually take those tokens and store them in the back end. I have multiple videos showing you why that's beneficial. So I'm not going to be explaining it again. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section or come ask them on my Discord server. Don't forget to check out the description. And if you would like the source code for this video, as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. Your help will be very much appreciated. A very big and special thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You helped me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.